Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I thought I'd do something a little fun and look at an invention off the Slingshot channel and evaluate how that would do in Canadian law. So what would happen if you decided to build one of those here in Canada? I'll let them explain it because they'll do a better job than I will, but here is the Mosasaur Hunter. It is made from six identical Cressy 55 pneumatic spare guns and they're all mounted in this rig. The guns themselves are unchanged, but there is a little bit of string attached to each one of the triggers. And if I pull the central trigger, then all six triggers get pulled at the same time. So if you missed that, it's six pneumatic spear guns all sort of attached together in one contraption that fires them all at once by means of one trigger. So whenever I see something like that, the first question I have is, is this a firearm? And the reason why is because if it's a firearm, then the case of the Queen in Falauka tells us that it must also be a weapon. So let's have a look at the definition for firearm here. Firearm means a barreled weapon from which any shot, bullet, or other projectile can be discharged and that is capable of causing serious bodily injury or death to a person. So here we know it has barrels because it's pneumatic. So, and we can see the barrels in the, that little snippet of video. And from which any shot, bullet, or other projectile can be discharged. That portion also seems to be, well, it's the entire point of the thing. So yes, that part's met. And then the next question is, is it capable of causing serious bodily injury or death to a person? The Supreme Court case of the Queen and Dunn sets out that the test for that is basically can it put your eye out? Is this capable of destroying or severely damaging a human eyeball? Now, of course, we don't use human eyeballs for this. Uh, usually this is tested with a pig's eye because it's anatomically similar. It's placed into an anatomic skull. So if you saw my last video, that's why I got this. And so then it's got the right sort of structure and then they fire something at it from close range. Now, I don't have one of those. I don't have any of the spear guns but we can see a little bit of what it does and infer from there. And <laughs> so when asking, can this put somebody's eye out? I'm gonna go with yes. I haven't done any tests at home. I don't have one of these things, but that looks like yes to me. So I think at this stage, I think it's a fairly safe bet to say that we are looking at a firearm. Now, the next step is, is this an 86 sub three firearm? Because if it is, that's going to make our life a little bit easier. So 86 sub three says certain weapons are deemed not to be firearms. And that's, you know, weapons that otherwise meet the criteria, stop being firearms for the purposes of certain sections of the criminal code. Not all sections, but certain sections. Uh, notably the ones involving licensing or, you know, trafficking so that you don't go to jail for giving your buddy a nail gun. And similarly, you don't go to jail for taking a nail gun to a job site without an authorization to transport and a license and all of that. Uh, also exempted from provisions of the Firearms Act. So they're not subject to the same storage requirements because can you imagine, you know, a carpenter who's got to put trigger locks on all of his nail guns? That would be a little weird. So one of the categories, and this is the one that interests us, is the any other barreled weapon where it is proved that the weapon is not designed or adapted to discharge uh, either a projectile at a muzzle velocity exceeding 152.4 meters per second or a muzzle energy exceeding 5.7 joules. Now I suspect that we're over 5.7 joules, although I don't know for sure, but those bolts look fairly heavy. Without knowing their mass, I can't really determine this one for certain. However, in terms of the muzzle velocity, I wasn't able to find anything on the particular muzzle velocity of these particular spear guns. But the research I've done suggests that they top out at around 200 feet per second. Now, 200 feet per second works out to about 61 meters per second, which is less than half of our cutoff. So even if these ones happen to be sort of particularly hot firing compared to spear guns generally, I still think we're going to be fairly safely within the 86 sub 3. So it appears right now that we've got something that is a firearm, 
but is also uh, 86 sub 3 firearms. Some people call them uncontrolled firearms. So this would be something you could have without a license, without uh, ATTs, all of that stuff. I'm going to, at this point, skip over what I would normally do, which would be to consider whether this is prohibited or restricted. Something, notwithstanding the fact that it's uncontrolled, can also be prohibited. Now, that's not going to cause you any trouble if you've got an 86 sub-3 firearm, because all of the, the laws that normally get triggered by something being restricted, you know, ATTs, are exempted out. So it's not going to matter that much for our purposes right now in terms of determining the legality of this, whether or not it also fits into those categories. It might matter to you if you got one of these things and you used it criminally somehow. You know, if you used it to rob a bank, because typically on sentencing, they'll sentence a little harsher if you're using a prohibited firearm than they will if you're using a non-restricted firearm. Although, to be honest, dead is dead and, you know, a gun is a gun. So I'm not sure that that's always the best classification or the best basis for sentencing, but it's how the courts tend to think about things. So that tells us a fair bit here. Now there's a few other sections that I'd like to look at here because they might be relevant or at least it's important to consider them. So one of the ones that springs to mind immediately is that there's certain restrictions on uh, things that actuate triggers. So let's have a look at that section and see how it applies or if it does, because there's clearly a device here that operates the trigger of several other firearms. Now, this is going to be an interesting question because ultimately the court may have to ask, is this six guns? Is this one big gun altogether? Is it both? Because the court might decide that it counts under both uh, subsections. So let's uh, have a look at this trigger actuating device uh, section and just see if it covers it. So we see here, this is under former prohibited weapons order number nine. Any electrical or mechanical device that is designed or adapted to operate the trigger mechanism of a semi-automatic firearm for the purpose of causing the firearm to discharge cartridges in rapid succession. So what these are is they sell little hand crank mechanisms or electric mechanisms that uh, Basically, it just pushes the trigger repeatedly. And so it allows for a semi-automatic uh, firearm to be operated in a semblance, although not very good, uh, of automatic fire. Now, that's not going to trip us up at all here. This is not going to be a problem for us because it's designed or ad adapted to operate the trigger mechanism of a semi-automatic firearm. And if we view these as six separate firearms, then none of them are semi-automatic. These things reload manually, so they're just a single shot. Uh, watch the full video, you'll see a bit of reloading. I don't want to take too much from his video, it's, it's good work, and, but they're single shot. And if we take this as one whole construction, then it doesn't appear to be semi-automatic in that case either, because semi-automatic firearms are self-reloading and this one doesn't. This is more akin to a revolver, although it doesn't revolve. It's got multiple chambers here. Uh, what it's most closely akin to is a pepper box, except that normally, or a volley pistol. So that's essentially what he's built, is a volley pistol. But there's, it doesn't appear that this would be, co be covered under here because of the need. This is specific to semi-automatic firearms. No semi-automatic firearm, this section doesn't apply. So that's, uh, that's helpful to us. There's another little section that uh, is worth looking at, and this is one that is not exempted. So it's when you're talking about 86 sub 3 firearms and how they're exempted from certain sections of the criminal code, not from this one. This is section 102, which is making an automatic firearm. Every person commits an offense who, without lawful excuse, alters a firearm so that it is capable of or manufactures or assembles any firearm that is capable of discharging projectiles in rapid succession during one pressure of the trigger. And this is a pretty serious offense. If the Crown proceeds by indictment, max of 10 years, minimum of one year. So that's pretty, pretty hefty. Now, the definition here is a little obscure or a little unclear. Because when we think about discharging projectiles in rapid succession, if you think about how a shotgun works, it fires 
many projectiles with one pressure of the trigger, but it fires them all at once. I mean, they might not be all exactly in lockstep. They might be some, you know, a few inches ahead of the other, but they're all at once. So it's not really a rapid succession. And that's what we see happening in the video here. They all fire in at once rather than the rapid succession that they seem to be describing, which is the action that we imagine from, you know, an Uzi or an AK-47 or a Gatling gun where it keeps firing repeatedly and then reloading itself and firing again. So it doesn't appear that this is likely to be what they consider. Now, one thing people will often complain about with lawyers, and I've got this complaint before, is why can't you give me a straight answer? Is this thing legal or isn't it? And the problem is, is that you never really know until it comes in front of a judge, because a judge could decide that this is rapid succession. I think that would be wrong. I would certainly appeal that decision if it was, you know, one that I was looking at. But you can never really know what the uh, the court's going to say. You can also never really know what a police officer is going to say. They might decide, hey, we're going to charge you. And ultimately, you might get acquitted at trial, but you might be out thousands of dollars. So there's always that risk. But this is probably legal. Uh, similarly, the other section in terms of trigger actuations, that's my, that's my reading of the law, and I think it's a fairly strong reading. It's one that I'm confident with, but a judge could go another way. So while I say that I think this is probably legal, I can't say that it's definitively so. There are rarely situations where I can give sort of a definitive answer. Certainly, I don't think you're going to find the Mosasaur Slayer in the firearm reference table. Although maybe if some enterprising uh, individual at the RCMP firearms lab watches this video, maybe they'll throw it in there. But so it's up in, in the air. There's a bit of question to it. Now, ultimately, my best guess is that this is probably something that Parliament didn't think about. I don't think when Parliament was considering all of these bans that they really thought about, well, what happens if somebody gets six guns and six them all together and that'll be its own thing? Because most firearms are pretty bulky. They wouldn't work as well. Those spear guns look fairly light, fairly, you know, he, he's a big guy. But I suspect that if you did the same thing with six SKSs, he'd be struggling a little to lift that thing. Ultimately, I think the reason why this isn't captured under any existing ban is simply because nobody thought of this idea before. It's a really clever, creative idea, and they probably would have banned it if they'd thought of it, because this looks like a lot of fun. And <laughs> a lot of the stuff that's banned is just apparently banned because it looks like too much fun, notwithstanding the fact that it doesn't pose any public safety concern. I can't see drug dealers picking this up and using this as a tool of violence, Typically, they prefer much more concealed items because, you know, if you're walking around trying to sell drugs and you're carrying this big honking item, police are going to notice this in a, in a big way. But we've got all sorts of things like throwing stars and blow guns and so forth, which really don't rank very highly on the public threat level, but nevertheless are banned because they made somebody nervous. Still... This is uh, this looks like a neat toy. I really appreciated the uh, the spirit of it. I really like some of the stuff that I see on the Slingshot channel. It's really creative, and frankly, the guy just looks like he's having a great time, and I appreciate the heck out of that. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this as interesting as I do. I really enjoy playing with this sort of novel situation. It's one of the ways that where law can be a lot of fun. Uh, I also want to say thank you to everyone supporting just hit 10,000 subscribers. That's a big deal for me. Uh, mostly, I think of my channel as not even the best firearms-related channel led by a guy named Ian, and you can see where who I'm talking about here. So I really appreciate the support that I've been shown. It's really fantastic. Thank you all. Uh, I want to also thank my $10 Patreon subscribers. Uh, that's my buddy Keith, Process Eng, Stephen Larson, Mark D, General Counsel of the CCFR, John Robinson, Tim Rogers, Roy Haddock, Frackles Dak, 
Jean-Alexandre Tessier, Cameron Johnson, Sir Goat, Sights and Arms Limited, Shaba Hollow, Peter Heinem, Craig Kwan, Akin Coxall, North Central Process Service, Toys Are For Boys, Ian Vaughn, Milan Vrekic, uh, Terence Griffiths, Doug Thompson, Malcolm Taylor, Brad Crooker, Jason Harrington, Lee Kiso, and a special thank you to $30 supporter Steve Browning. Please like, share, and subscribe this content if you found it useful. And thank you. I hope I've armed you with knowledge.